So good, good morning, everybody, and thank you for taking the time to join us today in our first think tank. My name is Claudia Hillinger. I'm the head of the international office at Friedrich Schiller University, and together with my colleague Dana Strauss, we are leading uh, work package seven science with and for society. The think tank is a part of these activities. We had an exceptional program so far for the EC2U forum, and I would also like to take the opportunity to thank Turku for the excellent program and excellent organization. And I hope that we will be able to follow up on, on that with our think tank session. As you all know, um, a major cornerstone of our EC2U alliance is the close collaboration, not only amongst the universities, amongst our seven universities, but we also look beyond EC2U, European campus of city universities implies and builds upon the strong ties to the respective cities and communities. And thus we strive to actively engage the cities, the citizens, the community, the industry and stakeholders at all levels. Together, we want to discuss the idea Europe what do we have in common? What are, we, what are the challenges that we're facing and how can we master them jointly? Our think tanks uh, are formats within our alliance to get in contact at all levels across the seven locations to exchange our views and perspective to share best practice to find solutions. Our first think tank is thus addressing the topic building a value-based community as a starting point. And again, we welcome you all to, to our first think tank. Um, I would like to welcome particularly our panelists. We will get back to them later and introduce them at a later point in time. Uh, I would like uh, to extend our warm welcome on behalf of the whole Work Package 17, so we, who is that? Uh, you see the list of, of our board members uh, displayed on the screen. I explicitly want to thank them for all the ideas and input they provided to make this uh, think tank and this session today come, come alive. I want to like in, to mention in particular Adriana Zeit, a professor from the University of Jasch, uh, of the Department Management Marketing Business Administration, who will present with us the results today, provide some reflections on the results. And uh, especially I would like to thank my colleague Dana Strauss. She is the co-leader uh, of our work package, Science Within for Society. She's the head of office of uh, our local network, Jena Versum. She made the presentation yesterday that explicitly addresses this network, university, communities, and uh, she is the leading person in coordinating uh, the, the first think tank uh, in the idea, implementing it together with the whole team. So my thank you goes to the team in the first instance, to Dana, and I would like to hand over to you directly. Um, thank you, Claudia. I want to say a big thank you to you as well. It was a great first month together. I mean, it is our first uh, endeavor, our first enterprise uh, together, you and me, and I think we've done a really good job so far. I'm looking forward to, to the next, um, all the deliverables that we, that we have planned. And I also would like to uh, thank another person, and you can see I'm I'm dressed in the corporate design of uh, of of easy to you. I want to thank uh, Lucille for the, uh, her help in the think tank in designing all the templates and helping us to make um, uh, the think tank and the ideas heard. So thank you, Lucille. Um, this this you know this um, look is for you today. Um, and also, I would like to thank everybody on the screen today. And uh, I want to right away uh, send an invitation out to you uh, to make your voice heard. That's the think tank we're talking about here. You can see a QR code. And um, I can also put it uh, in the chat later on. 
Um, this is the link to a Padlet that's just uh, like a dashboard where you can put your ideas. Of course, you can also put your comments and ideas and all uh, that bothers you into the chat. Um, we've already uh, have some very nice comments in the chat, but uh, the chat will be gone once the session is over. So if you want to uh, put your ideas, maybe for the next think tank, would you like, what would you like to talk about uh, somewhere permanent? You can follow the QR code and put your ideas on our Padlet. So what do we have uh, planned for you today? Um, of course, uh, we have a little introduction of the think tank and the presentation of the findings. I think uh, we'll be all excited to, to learn about that. Um, and later on, we're very honored to have our panelists with us today. Um, Professor Heike Ervasti, National Coordinator of the European Social Survey from uh, the University of Turku. We have uh, Matthias Bettenhäuser, head of the mayor's office from our city of Jena. We have uh, Fran Francisco Silva. He is a student of the University of Coimbra and a member of the European Student Network from uh, Coimbra. And we have Jean-Marc Neveu from Poti. He's the co-founder of Flexsteel and the CEO of the CDA group. And they, uh, as I learned, recycle the face mask and put them uh, to good news. And now I want to hand over to my colleague, Adriana. Thank you very much. Um, I uh, would like to start with uh, the idea of the think tank. We had a brainstorming and uh, decided that uh, at the core of all our actions and especially the core of um, education, uh, formal education, non-formal education, and informal education as our project target are values. So uh, the purpose of this uh, think tank was to discover what are the perceptions of uh, people from uh, our network of universities and uh, cities uh, in terms of um, individual or personal values, uh, also professional values and uh, societal uh, values. Other than this, we were also interested in finding out uh, what obstacles or barriers do people perceive when they want to leave their personal values? And also what are the solutions they uh, perceive? Because based on this, we would like to uh, design future actions in our uh, project uh, going back to the idea of uh, formal education, find those values that we should transmit to our students besides the technical professional ones. Speaking about the non-formal education, try to, to find those values that um, glue together initiatives for uh, lifelong uh, learning. And for the informal education, try to find those ideas that we can use freely in order to make people read about, think about, um, use ideas in social networks, maybe in serious games and um, so on. So this was the whole um, idea. And um, the survey uh, was uh, designed uh, based on uh, some uh, validated uh, scales. And uh, from here on, I uh, will let Dana to present uh, the main uh, findings. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. So um, Adriana already said that uh, the survey was based on validated scales for measuring perceived values at each level. It is, however, not designed to be a scientific study. It was just uh, our first, in some ways, it also was an experiment because, of course, it was a, the pandemic version of the think tank. If uh, we wouldn't deal with COVID-19, we would have met uh, in person and discussed those uh, things in person. Uh, but as the, as the virtual edition, I think uh, it was the first uh, try to see uh, how people react and uh, they reacted, as you can see. We've translated the survey in, into nine languages and to our nine languages of the, of the consortium. And we had uh, uh, 1,389 participants. Uh, thank you all if you are among them. Uh, thanks for your input. Uh, thanks for taking the time to fill out the survey. So now, uh, what are the findings? Uh, what did we What did we see? So first of all, we ask uh, the participants of the survey where they currently live and what their country of origin is. 
um, you see the results here. Uh, France has really been busy in advertising the survey, which is great, uh, and thanks again for that. Uh, what was uh, interesting, uh, so they made up the majority, but you can also see um, the other countries here. What was interesting when asked about the country of origin, uh, beside the seven easy to use countries, of course, uh, these were the countries that were named in the free space uh, we provided. So we can really see that, um, of course, we have the the European campus, but uh, we really are a global campus uh, always. We have to keep that in mind. With regard um, to, uh, to gender, most of the participants uh, were female, 59%. And uh, with regard to age, you can see that the biggest group here are the 20 to 24 uh, year, uh, years old uh, people. Um, but we also had participants from the other age groups, including, um, it's not correct, it's, yeah, including some, I can see it, um, some uh, senior, uh, it was only, I think, 13 uh, people over the age of, of 65, but the rest is equally distributed. Yeah, looking at the occupation, as we can already guess from the dominant age group, the most common occupation among the partic participants are the undergraduate and graduate students uh, right here. 10% were researchers or the same amount from the educational sector, 11% were from public administration. And what the, this graph, this diagram also shows is that uh, we still have some work to do and extending our network so that we will have uh, a really good interaction rate also with the business side and also the, the political um, municipality side of things so that we can have um, a really good percentage in interaction rate, participation uh, rate from all of uh, the stakeholders. As Adriana said, we ask people about three kinds of values, the personal, the professional, and the society values. And we also ask them about uh, what they perceive to be obstacles and solutions for those obstacles. So let's jump right into the first category here, the personal values. We ask how important are the following values for you personally? And the second part of the question, do you succeed in living these values? Just as a quick look uh, at the at the items, uh, the personal values we ask about, ranging from self-direction, stimulation, and so on to universalism. And uh, what we found here is this picture. So these are the results, um, the average across all our countries. And um, I think, uh, Adriana, you wanted to make a comment because I have that uh, little sign here. I think that's, uh, as you can see, this is the icon for age. We have a, we have an interesting finding regarding uh, the age differences. Yeah, it's true that uh, um, we noticed uh, important age differences. For example, uh, for younger people, comparing to the other categories of um, age, Hedonism is a very important value. It's something in line um, with what happens um, all over the world. And uh, this value is 80 for those aged uh, 16 to 19 and 72 for those between 20 and 24 years old. So uh, our societies should uh, consider uh, a type of blend between a rational and uh, let's say uh, uh, a hedonic well-being, if I can say so, uh, for the actions of our uh, project. Uh, also, hedonism is a little bit higher for male than for uh, female. And um, we discovered uh, as well that uh, those uh, individual values differences are not as high comparing to um, professional or societal values. So we will need to, to consider everything together or on, on all these uh, layers of culture, so to say, the national, the societal, professional, uh, 
gender and uh, so on. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. The second question was, do you succeed in, in living your values? <clears throat> you can see the results here. We do not want to discuss the results in detail, but uh, what we have done, you can have, you can have a look here, just um, uh, this is the, the value and we have the never, sometimes, always, I never succeed, I sometimes succeed, I almost always succeed in living this value. You can see, you can see the right results here. And as we don't have the time to go into detail, uh, we have uh, provided for you um, one sentence that summarizes the findings in that in the category. It's like in mathematics when you have a word problem that you are you will require to write down a sentence, and um, not as a number but as a whole sentence. We have that sentence here. So our survey paints a picture of a European citizen who values self-directed action, thinking up new ideas and being creative in a way that does not prioritize gaining power, but instead seeks ways to help and treat others equally, who are able in their daily lives to consider uh, others around them and be, a, be creative and think of new ideas while feeling safe, but who face power and struggle with it. And here I want to thank uh, Kirsi uh, from Turku for her input. And uh, she formulated this uh, finding because as you uh, already know, this was uh, a group effort, this survey. The second category, the personal values. And there we asked, at your current or last job, what are the values which most people act on? And uh, you, can see, you can see the results uh, here. What are the values most people act on? I'll give you a second to, it's a lot, that's a lot to take in, sure. That's really interesting to see where the, it touches the, the most, uh, the highest uh, scores and uh, see where are the low points. So what is perceived to people to act on. Okay, I will have the, the answer sentence for you after that as well. So here our survey paints a picture of European citizens who are looking for a stable and professional working environment that supports their personal development and well-being who are determined and resilient and work hard for recognition and reputation. So that's in a nutshell the result. The third is societal values. Uh, we ask people in your country, what are the values which most people act on? That was, that was the question here. And really interesting results also. can see what are the values. We have a clear winner here and uh, some, some work to do. Also, something to be optimistic about and also something to work on. It's uh, supposed to be respect for history and it, its lessons. Sorry, it's missing here. Okay, that's the result, the, the overall picture for uh, the societal values. And again, to put it in a sentence, our survey paints a picture of European societies which prioritize the freedom of opinion and value life and peace across all age groups, which are interested in innovation and in entrepreneurship and at the same time respect nature and the environment. So that's, um, that's the finding. Next up, uh, the obstacles. What are the obstacles in society that keep you from living your personal values? And uh, here are the results. What our participants believe to be obstacles in their daily life, what they perceive to be hassles and struggles they face every day or they observe in the world around them. 
Our survey paints a picture of European citizens who are confronted with egoistic and disrespectful behavior in their societies, uh, who must overcome inequalities and materialism in order to live their personal values. So that's the highest and the lowest uh, ranking items uh, in, in this uh, category obstacle. And for the last one, the solutions. What has to change in our society so that you can live according to your values? So this is the finding here. Um, you can see uh, the, the winners. And also the, lo the loser, just in um, less work which was interesting, interesting finding. We can see the icon for uh, the countries here because diff there was really a big difference between the different countries, while uh, Finland and Germany think this is a good option to have uh, less work uh, uh, for a uh, day a week uh, of work and then, you know, recreate to, to live the next uh, four days of work even better. Um, other countries, uh, for example, uh, Romania and uh, Portugal, thought this was it's not the way. It's not the way to do it. But uh, we have a big uh, difference here in with regard to to countries. Okay. And also here, the summarizing sentence: Our survey paints a picture of European citizens who wish for more environmental protection, to live according to their values who see mutual respect, equality, and listening skills as factors for societal change. So that's the description of all our findings. I'm well aware that this was uh, one forced right through uh, lots of numbers, but I hope we can could uh, present you the overall uh, results, the overall findings. You have some idea of what, what was uh, happening in the survey. And we also um, wrote the first uh, reflection of things. First of all, we also gave uh, the findings to Professor Noack from our university. He is professor of uh, psychology. And he commented, what was impressive for me is that by and large, enormous similarity of countries in terms of judgment on viable solutions. I thought that this is encouraging when aiming at European solutions. So I think this is a really a powerful statement and uh, also in reassurance of what we are doing with the easy to you. So from our board, Work Package 7, um, we think that we should be loud and clear. We do share values and we should state them loud and clear. And as recommendation, uh, we would, for example, think of a uh, mission and vision statement on the easy to you website, to put it there. Right now, we really focus on mobility, um, which, is, which is great, of course, and uh, one of the big things we do here in easy to you but we can be uh, confident and uh, put the values that bound us together on, on a very, uh, visible page uh, as well. Yeah, and Adriana, I think you go, you you go on. Uh, well, uh, what I uh, uh, would like to to add to the previous results is that uh, in terms of obstacles and solutions, there are um, age differences as well to to be considered. And uh, one uh, I found interesting is that for. Um, younger people, especially 16, 19, uh, the highest obstacle is uh, social pressure. And uh, also this category of age uh, sees as a, a solution a lot uh, more listening between people. So maybe again, these are uh, values we should uh, create, uh, we should uh, focus on in our um, universities and also in all our actions for non-formal and um, informal um, education. Uh, then uh, going back to these uh, reflections, uh, we saw that uh, uh, two themes were quite uh, visible. 
the respect of each other and the environmental protection. Um, interesting again here, uh, for um, younger people, the respect of, uh, for nature had a, a low level as a value. So they, they perceive the fact that they should develop this more. So uh, they can be used, these two um, values, as the glue for our future actions. When looking at the differences between countries, uh, keeping in mind the fact that we never speak about values in terms of good or bad, they are just different. So uh, we will need to consider our activities, especially our communication messages and uh, so on, uh, with a common basis, so what we call the, the trunk of uh, the tree, and also different branches uh, tailored according to um, differences for every partner, because we would like everyone to, uh, to come together and work on these common uh, issues. Uh, these differences in perceptions of values uh, will have to be considered. Um, of course, this is a, uh, a delicate issue, if you want, uh, because we need to uh, act for both, let's say, the present and also the future, keeping in mind the fact that actually what we are doing in the present shapes uh, all the values of uh, the younger generation. So. Uh, there is an interdependence here that we have to, to consider. And uh, networks need to, to be built. Uh, we definitely need more implication from outside um, academia, especially uh, from the professional environment and from the citizens. And uh, uh, in our talks uh, in, in the group, in the working package, uh, we are thinking of um, actions designed, targeted, to this particular uh, type of stakeholders for uh, future uh, think tanks. And of course, continue the dialogue because the dialogue is really, really important if we want to do things together. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. So this Claudia. was, Dana, you wanted to add something? That was your keyword. <laughs> Flow's yours, Claudia. <laughs> um, I think, continue the European dialogue together was the key and buzzword that leads us uh, to the next part of this session. And again, thank you very much uh, to the panelists uh, who took the time today to share their views and perspective with us. We are well aware, and you can see that in the chat that this, as Dana already said, was a perforce right through some of the findings. There are a lot more. We made a selection. Uh, we will share the results and I think we will have uh, to look into some of the results more deeply and uh, um, thoroughly. Again, I think there is much more that we can draw from that. I would like to welcome the panel again. Uh, it was important to us that we got some perspectives and views from outside of our academic world on these findings. So we shared some of the results with the panelists beforehand. And um, I would like to uh, hand over to Professor Heike Eversti. He's the national coordinator of the European Social Survey from Turku. We are very excited to hear your perspective on what we just presented, building a value-based community. How do we do this? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I think I have uh, three points just uh, that are generated just by, by uh, going through these uh, results. Uh, first of all, uh, I think it is uh, very good idea of the ECU to uh, to uh, to conduct such a survey and make the effort of, of charting uh, the values of the whole whole network. Uh, it is very important to know the values of of people involved in all collaborative activities like this network or, or any other values define what we are, who we are, what our goals are or should be, and what are the matters that should be taken into account as we pursue 
uh, the goals. By defining our values, we identify uh, ourselves actually. And that's uh, why also all sorts of comparisons are extremely interesting. Uh, I did have, have a brief look uh, comparing these uh, distributions with, with uh, European social survey data, which uh, employs nationally representative samples and from, from more than 30 countries. So, so it's, a, it's a very good reference point. And uh, what I found was, was, first of all, a striking similarity. Many things are very much the same as among, as they are amongst the general population. This, this concerns, for example, benevolence and, and universalism. These are very uh, largely shared values all over Europe. Uh, but there are also clear differences. As already mentioned, hedonism made an exception, a clear exception. And uh, that's, that probably is, of course, due to the uh, younger age uh, on average in this sample than what it is in general population. But also there was another, another uh, difference too, and that concerns achievement. Uh, it was much more valued in this sample than it is all over uh, in uh, European general populations. So uh, th this could be, in this sense, I could conclude that this, this sample stresses hedonism and achievement uh, more than, than Europeans in, on, on uh, average. Uh, about social values, uh, there was this be, uh, appreciation of peace, peace and uh, freedom of uh, speech, these two scored highest, uh, followed very closely by progress and innovation and entrepreneurship. Peace and freedom of, uh, freedom of speech, they are highly valued among all populations, but innovation and entrepreneurship uh, are higher, scored higher in this sample than they do in other surveys. Uh, environment was a little bit surprised because uh, uh, in this comparison, they, they were pre uh, relatively on a, on a uh, pretty low scale. And also there is this somewhat uh, surprising age, age difference so that the older generation seems to be more worried about the environment than the younger generations. And this is surprising, but this finding is consistent with some other pretty recent uh, studies. So it, it probably is correct anyway. Uh, my second point is about values and behavior. Sometimes we here, critique about research on values. Why do study values? Because people say this is our value, and in any case, they behave differently. This is not the case. Actually, there is very convincing evidence that, that, that this is a mistake. People do care about their values, and people actually do not feel comfortable when they cannot live their lives. So it is very good to include these items in this survey, I should say. And according to respondents, uh, it was egoism and inequality that were the most important obst obstacles for living values. Uh, lack of vision or financial opportunities seemed not to be a problem, which I find very interesting. Uh, but the most interesting uh, detail was that sexism scored very low and racism actually scored the lowest. This, is, this was, a, of course, a positive surprise, but, but something that I did not expect. Well, thirdly, and as my last point, uh, I would like to pay attention to, to 
what is the significance, the general significance of values. Uh, this is something that uh, only recently has raised uh, more academic uh, discussion. It has been found that common values actually promote trust in communities. They promote trust in other people, so-called generalized trust. If we share values, we trust each other. But even better, if we share values, we also trust in our common institutions and our common activities. So goal setting becomes much easier on, on shared values. But whenever there are differences, which of course exist, all people cannot simply think the same way, they should be discussed and, and the dialogue that you already called for is, is, is very important in this sense. Uh, a reasonable discussion and a dialogue uh, may put different views together and generate something new and create uh, entirely new perspectives. But this has uh, I, my suggestion is that the analysis should still go further and, and uh, look deeper into the differences between, between different uh, groups of respondents. But all in all, all, in all I, I, I'd like to congratulate you for a very good idea of conducting this survey. And, and it was very interesting to, to read these this highly, highly interesting results. Thank you. Thank you, Heike. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that was a very valuable comparison of our findings with uh, the, the European Social Survey. And that provides a lot of potential to look deeper and more thoroughly in some of our findings and, and uh, see what we can where there is a match. I, to the audience, please hold back on your questions. We'll get to the discussion later on. If you have any question comments, please use uh, the chat. We will get, get back to these questions. So thank you again, Professor Everstein. Very interesting uh, comments that we will gladly take up. The next uh, panelist today is Matthias Bessen. Bettenhäuser. He is the head of the mayor's office of our city of Jena. We have known each other for quite some time now. We work together closely on many occasions. And I'm very happy that he took the time today to be with us. Um, I hand over the microphone to you. Welcome again. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. And uh, thank you very much also to be uh, a part of this uh, panel today. Um, reading the results of this uh, little research uh, was very interesting and uh, also because um, I took part in this uh, uh, in this questionnaire and uh, so I was uh, felt good to see that uh, my values uh, um, they fit to the values of the majority and especially the universalism and uh, um, also to help others. Uh, I think this, uh, this feels Good. Uh, the, this is the first impression, and uh, I was wondering that, uh, on the other hand, um, the obstacles are inequality and uh, egoism and materialism. And uh, I was wondering um, how can it be that, uh, on the one hand, we uh, what we value most are also uh, the opposite is the are the biggest uh, obstacles. And um, there's one point um, that irritated me um, most. Uh, this was the very low uh, value for power in the personal values. And um, the statements you put behind uh, the word power was, uh, um, it is important to me to be in charge and uh, I like to be able to tell people what to do. And I was wondering, um, well, uh, who's shaping our society? And our uh, society is, of course, is shaped by the people, but it's also especially shaped by the people who are in charge, uh, who take over office, uh, especially in politics. And uh, so I was uh, 
uh, asking myself um, with very low um, results uh, to the value power, uh, why does it have uh, such a negative uh, connotation? And uh, in the end, I think it's very important to have people who share these uh, values like universalism and, uh, and uh, benevolence uh, and self-direction and to bring these values into our, um, yeah, uh, in our government and our society to, to, to share, to make them more strong so that we can live by them. And um, there can, I come to the point that, that uh, also because of uh, my profession, uh, being close to an administration and to politics uh, that I'm, yeah, I'm concerned about uh, the, about uh, the situation of our democracy and also how we uh, discuss um, um, problems in our society. Uh, in, German, in Germany, but also as far as I uh, get to know in other countries, that uh, the way how to uh, deal with each other, how to connect and how to uh, discuss values, uh, that's, um, yeah, I'm wondering if it's a good way. And uh, I think we need a, a, people who are sharing these values to go into, into politics, to go into charge also in a university or in a, in a business uh, to, uh, yeah, to build our society. And, uh, but not only, uh, um, and I think I'm also thinking about the new forms of uh, getting into, uh, to being in power, to be in leadership, uh, like an agile leadership, uh, so a leadership, I, in my understanding today, uh, modern leadership doesn't mean simply to be an authority and to tell other people what to do, but it's also to be a uh, responsibility, but to connect to the employees, uh, the, um, to connect to the citizen, to connect to uh, the people I'm being in charge of. And um, in politics, uh, one thing we uh, in Germany, but uh, also in other countries, uh, what is getting more and more important besides the parliamentary uh, democracy is uh, citizen participation. That we uh, will be, uh, that we are asking the people, that not only the people in the parliament decide about a, a question, but that they also include the, the citizens of the city. And I think that this um, form of including uh, people uh, into their decision and uh, uh, to make them to participate, uh, this makes our society stronger, I think, uh, our democracy. And I could imagine that it also helps us to bring these values uh, you, uh, you showed with your research that get that they um, yeah that we are able to lift them more on uh, not that the, and that these obstacles like inequalities maybe that they get less that's my wish uh, uh, to change our uh, uh, society in this direction and uh, we need good people good people uh, who go in charge and to uh, want to change and develop uh, our society in this direction so these are the things. Um, I was thinking about uh, by looking at uh, this research and uh, I'm looking forward to discuss these and other points with you. Thank you very much um, for that perspective. Um, I think that's something that we need to discuss very solidly. Um, I hope that we will come back to that in the end. Thank you for that contribution. For our alliance, the students, of course, are in the core of our activities in the center of our focus. And I'm especially happy that one of the students from the Erasmus Student Network is with us today. Uh, Francisco Silva from University of Coimbra, a student in quantitative methods in finance. So we are looking forward to hear your perspective. I hand over the microphone to you. Well, uh, good morning to all. I'm really honored to be here today having this discussion with you. 
uh, I'd like to begin by standing out uh, one of the values that was considered in the survey, uh, universalism. As a volunteer in ESN, this is the core of our daily action as a student organization. Uh, we are students helping students, therefore having a strong openness to the world is essential. Um, I believe that there is a need in widening the participation and social engagement uh, of people, especially youth. Uh, one way to do that, I believe, is the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, get more people to get to know other cultures uh, must be a priority of policymakers. One step forward is, for example, uh, this alliance where Europeans cooperate in knowledge transfer and, in my opinion, and above all, uh, promote the European feeling, the European values, uh, not just as an idea, but as the future. Um, on the other hand, um, focusing on ESN, uh, the work of our volunteer organization across Europe makes a positive impact in overcoming some of the obstacles this survey has sent out um, as lack of respect and racism, for example, are very concerning issues on our society. Um, therefore, increasing participation in mobility um, and cooperation are the way to go. In other words, we must promote people uh, to know each other, to work together, so we, we can be more aware of the path we still have to build together, cooperation and integration. Um, as I was hearing the other panelists, I, I strongly uh, support the opinion of Matthias uh, here in the, last, in the last words, where he said we must hear the people and uh, know their opinions and how they think uh, we must change. Um, it is essential that uh, not only politicians, but also universities and we can say people in power hear us, uh, not, as, uh, not only as students, but also as members of the community. Uh, we are the future, we must build it together. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco, for this contribution. I think um, the European idea and all the ideas that have already been expressed uh, by the three panelists so far show us that uh, we need to keep continuously working on the European idea, on how to get into dialogue, to exchange ideas, to, to build new, um, new models for, for cooperation and exchange. The last panelist in our round today is uh, Jean-Marc Neveu. Uh, welcome to you as well. Mark is the co-founder of um, Plaxtil. He is the CEO of the CDA group from Poitiers. And as far as I understand, your company is focused on recycling masks, but maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that uh, in the context of your presentation. Uh, Jean-Marc Neveu, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed for, uh, for welcoming uh, me and um, Thank you very much. Also, I, I think this uh, this um, study and this moment is very uh, important for me to, uh, to to state about what what we are doing here. And uh, maybe there is a, a lot of um, you know something um, risky in in our situation. And uh, it's a it's a good time to to to, to take a little bit higher to to see the, the situation. So I, I, I'm the um, I'm the founder of uh, Black Steel. You know, Black Steel. Uh, we are the first in the world. I think so. Uh, we are a small company, but we are the first. Uh, we are doing with this uh, kind of uh, face mask that everyone uh, wear uh, to, to transform it in uh, in product. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Product for the it's a school kit. You can see that. Okay. And um, the question is um, why a, a, a very small, a very tiny, uh, uh, tiny um, um, firm company in Europe uh, do this this kind of uh, of uh, of uh, business? 
And I would like to, to express uh, why uh, we, we are doing that. And um, so when I, 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 take, I, uh, I take over the company, uh, I see people here in, in Châtelot, in Poitiers, with a very bad esteem of themselves. And they consider uh, them as uh, not very uh, valuable people, uh, you know. And um, what I, I have done is to um, to to um, to put them in a in a, in a optimistic way, and uh, we do it with uh, artistic viewpoint of view. Uh, we make um, you know uh, some 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 picture of the, the people who are doing the, their business and um, they see themselves and they see themselves as something beautiful. What I say is, is that um, there is a big, big pressure now in our society to succeed or to fail, maybe it's the same way. And um, uh, what I saw is that uh, how to proceed to, to succeed or how to fail, uh, not to fail. And uh, what we have done is that uh, we, we can we, we imagine with together that the team team could be a, a good way to to, uh, to to succeed for 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 ourselves and for personnel and for the community. That's that's very important to to to. Uh, to, to see there is a, a tension between, uh, between personnel and, and, and team. And for me, what is the, pre, uh, the most important is to, to consider a team. And when we are a team, we, uh, we can do uh, a lot of things. And um, so the, 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 the challenge is that um, to, to, to make a team, is not for one time. You cannot say, okay, we are putting values, and values is is a team. Huh? A team is a value. Huh? You can not say that uh, it's 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 done one time. You have to uh, make a routine to to discuss about the the value you are you are putting in in a in a company. Huh? And um, for example, when uh, there is a um, Sanitary crisis, and we we talk with with the team. What what kind of rules we are uh, doing? Uh, we are to uh, to observe here in a, in a in a company. Uh, nevertheless, uh, nonetheless, the uh, the sanitary recommendation of the government. So, is uh, is to say that uh, there there is a um, we have to do it routinely. Um, obstacles for me uh, is that uh, it's a time. It takes time to to make to build a team, and uh, you know there is pressure to uh, to to to, uh, to make the, the things uh, quicker, the, the better, the quicker, and uh, you you don't take time to uh, build a team. And for me, it's very very important to uh, when we have some collective this decision to make we close uh, everything we cut uh, the, the phone and everything and we are um, doing business for for the team time is is uh, it's a better way to there is no way other way to to, to build a team that to take time to do this um so um a, um, to, to make all, 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 everybody aboard, it's very important that uh, um, uh, that uh, top manager and uh, all the people are uh, in the same boat, uh, I would say. And uh, every maybe you have some top manager. We have a, we have some 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 rule about the, the organization, but you have to mix uh, top top organization manager and. Uh, and people who are working in this organization to make a team, sure. So for me, um, it's very important to, to have common value. That's, it's uh, like uh, a vision. And uh, I will conclude with that, is that uh, with uh, Antoine Saint-Exupéry, you know, that guy, and he, he said that uh, if you want to build the ship, don't dread up the main together would divide the work and give orders. 
in in instead, in instead teach them to yearn for the West and endless seed, so to make a vision. And uh, I think with a vision and uh, with a time to, to, uh, to share uh, to share values um, and to discuss values about that, you can create a team and you can be the, the first in the world to, to, um, to recycle the mask. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, this perspective speaks from our heart because this is exactly what we're trying to build as an alliance, a team with a vision. Um, this is what we are working on right now. And I think we're on a good way. And uh, your statement, uh, Jean-Marc, exactly reflects what, what we have in mind, what our vision is. So thank you very much uh, for that. Can I? I would, Dana? Yeah, I just, uh, um, if, uh, if I look at the time, we have uh, yeah, three, three more minutes. And if that's okay with you, Claudia, I just want to um, switch to our chat moderators, Flora and, uh, and uh, Jean in Pochi, and ask them if there are any um, last sentences or questions we can answer in two and a half minutes. <laughs> I hope that you still bear with us a few more minutes than one and a half minutes. Uh, but I think it was the, the remarks were so interesting that I didn't want to cut them off. <laughs> so yeah. forgive me for that. But I hope that there's still a little bit time that you bring along uh, to for discussion with us. Yeah. Okay, uh, there is one question. Um, how does EC2U is currently thinking values can be built? How can we build these values together? May I maybe ask uh, Ludovic <laughs> <laughs> to address this question? Ludovic, would you be willing to answer to that? Wow, you, you are really... <laughs> Asking me on the go to um, to respond to this, you, you you hear me and you and you you see me, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, that, that's that's a difficult question because in a way this is the whole idea about uh, around and, and within the C2 Alliance. We want actually to to promote the European identity, but in a shared way. And therefore, uh, this is actually the whole idea around the C2U uh, think tanks is that we want to see what are our common values and put them forward and to strengthen them. So I wouldn't say that we want to, 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 to make a specific value, uh, but we want to build on the existing values that we share. I know this is maybe not exactly what is expected as a response, but it's difficult actually to to, to, to say that we would uh, create a new value per se, but uh, what we want to do is actually to identify the, the common values. And I think that this, uh, uh, these results actually um, are already uh, providing us some uh, guidelines uh, and we want to strengthen them all together. And I think by just doing what we're doing, we already, um feed a lot of the values that were talked about today. That's just being in dialogue and um, um, calling uh, ourselves a family. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's about it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ludovic. I hope I didn't put you too much <laughs> in the spotlight, but I think you were the one to speak for the Alliance as a whole. <laughs> Thank well, you. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Any, any other questions, comments, remarks from the audience? Um, one question from Raoul. Um, in his opinion, differences in perception can also exist um, from one European region to another one. Uh, so he is making like differences between rural and urbanized regions, region, no border regions coastal region, interior regions, uh, also regarding the opinion of academics. So it's a, a comment and um, a question as well. <laughs> I think 
we can agree that's yes. that, that would be absolutely interesting to 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 tackle uh, also the regional differences and yeah absolutely right Raul that would be a good point and if I may add, I just want to repeat what uh, was in the first slide and what Ariana mentioned. We did not design this as a scientific study per se. For us, it was just a starting point for a dialogue amongst us. So um, there are a lot more topics and issues that we could have addressed in that survey. Um, and I think one of the questions um, that was already in the chat and we might come at the end to that question. What is your wish list for, for the follow-up think tank? So what should we pick up from this first session? What do you want to see addressed there? What, where do we need to look a little bit more thoroughly into it? So this would certainly be something um, that we would like to, your feedback on. Uh, Flora just uh, reminded us of the Padlet, so put your ideas there as well, and we'll pick up on that. Um, Raul, I see you in the chat your comment, the next step could be a scientific study. Yes, definitely. Yeah, be yeah. our guest. <laughs> you can volunteer, <laughs> just send us a mail, we get that thing started. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, um, I think, Claudia, with, we have a look at the time. I think uh, we can um, come to an end of this session. We thank you all again very much for your input and we would be happy if we could continue the discussion in one of the coffee rooms and also put your ideas on the Padlet. They will be there permanently. And uh, yeah, see you uh, at the next uh, think tank. Yeah, and thank you all again the Work Package 7 board, the panelists, uh, Turku, and all the participants who contributed with their interest and their question and comments today. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye to all. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Julia. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you have to send off one of those, Jean Marc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Thank good. you. Keep up the good work.